Consent agenda, and approval of the agenda, approval of the minutes, approval of the bill. We'll just build the minutes separately. So do I have a motion to accept the motion motion. agenda? Wow. Well, there's a motion to accept the agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. We have a second. All in favor? Second. All right. Consent agenda is passed. Building permits. Okay, I've passed those around. The first one that we'll talk about is the one that was in Spanish. Yeah, and um, let's see, I wrote something like this. Ada Reynolds. We wrote a building permit to put up a, a uh, four foot wire fence around the backyard, and my understanding is to keep the kids from wandering away and keeping critters from wandering into the backyard. So, fortunately, it's just like a lot of other things, the building permit gets turned in after the work gets done. So, um, so this was done already again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I sent the mirror out to look at it. Is it a chicken wire? Yes, without a chicken wire. What's that? Without a chicken wire. It's basically, it's the the same fencing that we had down to brush pile, it's two by four welded wire on steel posts. She put down chicken wire, and I don't know why she put down chicken wire. So Other than there's a language chicken. issue there, she does not speak any English. So, so it really isn't chickens, it's keeping no, kids. No, it's, it's the kids. This is my understanding. So, anybody have any suggestions? What's it look like? It just it's yeah. safe at all. Sort of looks like the one over on the corner of uh, uh, Elm Street and Lincoln Avenue. Not stretched real tight. It works. Anyway, it's not something a contractor would put up if you want to do it yourself or How does that fit into the city ordinance in terms of what's required for fencing? Well, what's required is that they fill it out, give us a drawing. And then the fence itself, though. What's that? What the requirements for the fence itself? Material. Material. Uh, it was, uh, you know, they, they put in the, we don't have a specific um, requirement for a fence material. Um, it can be welded wire, it can be chain link, it can be um, picket fence things like that. Um, in the back, you can have a privacy fence up to eight feet tall in around the front of the house. It can't be, it's gotta be, I think, four foot is the, minimum, is the maximum height, and uh, you can't make it solid. You have to be able to see through it. So. We don't have any, anybody who puts up a decent fence, they all put that crap up. Put a motion to accept the building permit. Well, everybody else got one, she just will have one too. I'll make a motion. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Dan has a motion. Aaron seconds it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, who's saying aye? I said aye. Aye. You're saying nay. What are you saying? We don't have any 
your pictures? No, I don't have any pictures of it. No. City ordinance, and we didn't get a. We got a motion. We didn't get a second, so the motion died. We did get a motion and a second to table the issue. Uh, that's the background on it. Um, so, what did what our attorney say, or whoever looked at it for a lawyer? Because that's what we tabled it for. We're supposed to. You, want, you wanted to have some more information about what other people had said. Everybody that I've looked into around the area, like like Gilmore City, Eagle Grove, Belmont, everybody has pretty much what this ordinance says. There's no like. Yeah, but what what the people that are gonna? I looked read. into it as well, and Humboldt has a dedicated chapter to their ordinances, outlining. Yeah, we had all that at our. What's that? that? We had that information at our last. Meeting. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm saying I, we tabled it for the reason of we were trying to figure out a way to protect the city, but yet people that want to improve their property. We couldn't find anything pertaining. So nobody, no lawyer would touch it. So basically, if we tell them no and they want to fight us, no lawyer want to touch that either. Well, I don't want to go to court on anything, but my view on them is they're a temporary storage container. If you're going to turn them into something else, then uh, what you have, have all the materials on hand, just like a building, to build the building. Yes, but he has the intentions of doing that. I've heard, <laughs> and I get what you're saying, but I've heard intentions from a lot of people in town, and they never get around to it. Well, we just approved a chicken wire fence. <laughs> so, I mean, that kind of follows on. Well, okay. the thing is, do, we, do you want to open a can of worms? Because, there, okay, I talked to the uh, treasurer and the assessor about this today. And as a city, there is, there is a back door that as a city we can use and get this through. Because uh, conveniently, there are some, there's some, there are some other stuff in town, like uh, trailers used for storage, that are built, that are taxes are residential, but the property is deemed commercial by the city. And nobody outside the city touches the zoning but us. So, <clears throat> as a city, we can, we can go and zone the, the, the chunk of the lot this sits on, and it's adjacent to his house, so it'll be so it'll read just like the other one I read today. Uh, tax resident uh, residential property for taxation purposes, and the assessor says as long as it's right next to the house, the, the taxes probably won't change. Okay, so there is a back door as a city we can use now. So this is the assessor that says this. Yes. Okay, I'm happy to. Talk to them because I'm not. I'm, I understand and what you're saying, but and I'm not the, and on another. Not. And on another note, the auditor's office did not know that uh, Aaron was a council member, 
but we, we forgot to notify them for oh, next well. year's election. But well, I guess I let them know today that there's another thing on the to do list. That well, happens. they know, she knows now, Lori knows, or Lena or Lori or Lena or whatever her name knows. I have a place right here. I was going to say, I'll take it So I moved to accept it because I, we know the person, we know what character. Uh, uh, you know what standing he is, okay. and I don't think there will be a problem. And, and he also has, at the last meeting, informed us that he plans on making this into a building. Okay. Well, I make a motion to accept it. Playing the devil's advocate, what do we do in the future when other people bring these things in, and maybe they're not brand new or said to be brand new, or they have no plan, or they're falling apart? Well, we can go with the zoning if it makes you feel any better. Because we control that, or we could just, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is, but I don't think the answer is let's put this ordinance in and just, I mean, he's has intentions to making this appealing. I mean, you look at his property now, it's appealing. Why would we, that, I mean, if we deny it, you're telling him, telling people, it, you know, what kind of a message are we sending there? Well, you know, I talked to different people about it, and while they don't have a qualm about where it's located, I said, well, how about if it was on, on the property next to you? Oh, no, I don't want that. He's got all his, he's got neighbors that signed off on it. He's got 122 signatures on a petition. I, I, get, I, I, get the, I get the petition thing, but I also get that there's a lot of people on there that probably didn't understand what the heck they were signing. Just like, oh yeah, I'll sign that. Why well, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand some of our stuff on this. So I mean, well, that's that's life. Yeah. Is there is there a right answer? That's what I was looking for when we table it last time. Yeah. Somebody with legal okay. stature to tell us how to proceed. I'm not looking for what other towns do. We already had that information last week. All right. Well. Do I have a motion to accept this? You got a motion. Do I have a second? I want to say something before you guys go do anything. I do not think we need containers in our town. I told Jeremy when he brought it up the last time, I said, it's kind of cute how they put these together. They build them in, uh, out on acreages and uh, mountains and all kinds of places, but I've talked to a lot of people and they don't want one. John, how would you like one of these sitting across from you? I'd like to see a plan to make something out of it. So, yeah. I'd say when they go follow through with it. I had a, we have a, a neighbor from our last last place that the one in looks like a boost to train. It's kind of cool. So if you're going to throw those things back there, you're going to have progress. Okay. All right. Well, we have a motion. Do I have a second? May I make a comment, Lindsay, on the representative no. No. of this building permit? We need, we have a motion on the table. We need to either second it or let it die, one of the two. So do I have a motion? We have a motion. Or do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. You second the allow in this. Okay. I want a roll call. We have a motion and a second. We'll call a vote. Aaron. Tell me you don't get to make any comments whatsoever. We're going to stick to the agenda here. Okay. Com uh, council comments. Aaron, do you have anything? No. I know. I'd like to be moved to the end of the meeting. Okay. Al? Yeah. Uh, I get phone calls from people about the new. Ordinance Enforcement Officer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to let people know when you call me, I do look these up. Uh, I got a call about some toys in the yard. I looked at the letter, I looked at the pictures. 
There was no mention about the toys. I got another one about another property last night. I had a letter sent to me. No mention of what uh, what this per these people were complaining about. I understand some things are, are not right, but uh, if you got a question, you can call me. I'll look it up. So some things are not right in what way? Well, I don't agree with some things that we decide, but you know, that's my opinion. We adopted the International Property Management first, the <coughs> maintenance code, and that's what he deals with. If it translates over to what's in our ordinances, that supports it, and if there's a difference in the two, International Property Maintenance Code <coughs> takes precedence. Okay, well, what I don't agree with is the fact that as a council, we do not know where these letters are going, to who, Nothing. But you, all you have to do is. I don't, I don't, I don't. But all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, it would be nice before they were sent out to the people that we at least were hand, okay. were giving them or something or, or something, just so we don't get land blasted. They are they are delivered here to the office. I understand that. Now. I'm just saying. Because I've never seen <laughs> in the past, it's been, been an issue where yeah. people, and, and as you know now, we put them in a binder. Yeah, no, I'm just talking as far as... Yeah, in the past, trying to do a better job. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Well, we have a little out of town. Dan. Nope. All right. Uh, Acting first comments. Um, I don't know if I have anything, do I? I don't think so right now. Oh, well, yeah, somebody will talk about it at the end of the meeting. Okay. okay. All right, Mayor's comments. Um, got a couple of them here. Um, group that is representing the gazebo over here on the corner had a meeting on uh, the 10th. Um, I'm just going to read through the minutes here real quick. Uh, they reviewed concerns uh, with, re with regard to working together to build a better community. Um, Sounded like that all of the people in attendance were in agreement with that. Uh, they are going to create a historical plaque, my understanding. Uh, Gloria Gunderson will do some research and they will build a historical plaque that tells the story of the gazebo so that after our generation is gone, the people that are, have firsthand knowledge that that knowledge will be passed on to future generations. Um, they talked about responsibilities on keeping the corner up over there. So for tree trimming, Chris Westergaard uh, stepped up for undergrowth clearing. Um, John Kennedy and Joe Tiernan um, said that they would uh, work with that. Plants and maintenance, um, Cheryl Hawk. Um, the painting and decorating, uh, Ruth and Julie. Uh, organizer and spokesperson is Gloria, so she's going to be our, <clears throat> for lack of a better word, belly button for this. And then Sarah uh, is going to be doing the web, wh whatever needs to go on the website. Uh, they will be asking for volunteers. I hope that the community will help out in any way they can. <clears throat> they would like to have more use of the gazebo. Um, so the, some of the plans they have in progress are the seasonal decor, including for Veterans Day, 4th of July, Halloween, um, Christmas, and that type of thing. Uh, paint donations have been found. Um, so uh, they'll be looking at painting it. Uh, right now they're just gonna touch it up with, with uh, brown stain, but it sounds like uh, possibly they're gonna repaint it with white paint. Um, let's see here. They just made other discussions about uh, how to use it, and then the meeting was adjourned. So I thank them for their efforts. Um, water tower. I don't know how many people made it to the water tower lighting on Saturday night. 
think there was about 50 or so people there. We had hot chocolate and um, um, hot uh, apple cider and cookies and things like that. I think it looks pretty awesome. Um, and for Street Park, I'd like to publicly thank John and Di Diane for stepping up and clearing out a lot of the underbrush over there. It looks really, really nice. They put a lot of effort into it. And we'll continue on and we'll try to support them in any way we can. And the uh, water tower lighting, we probably should mention also who paid for some of that stuff. Okay. Um, I think as far as I know, the poll was donated by the folks that uh, <coughs> deal with um, the rural electric. Um, Kevin Kearns um, did the wiring for it. Uh, Mick Reisberger donated the light. And uh, the bill, um, the, the city will not be billed for the use. The anticipated use is about $10 a month and it's hooked up to the uh, elevator's uh, um, meter. And, and I'm paying that, that cost. cost you're paying that yeah, I'm paying the electrical cost. Yes. <clears throat> so anyway, so it all looks pretty cool. All right, that's all I have for comments. Okay. Yep, yeah, utility reports. We don't have either of the. Carrie's here now. So. Well, the report on just winterizing everything, and that's about it. Work on the street curves, curb stops, and. Curb stops are coming along. We just got a few of them to address yet. That'll be great. Uh, anything else? No. Okay. All right. Any citizens' comments? So. All right. First up is Jeremy Ives. In five minutes. Uh, good evening. I want to discuss this building permit that you guys have so graciously denied. Um, as a citizen of Rolf, law-abiding and tax-paying, I am obligated to abide by codes and ordinances of this town that are currently in the book as of right now. I am not to be obligated by any codes or ordinances that you intend to pass in the future or any of your personal agendas or preferences. I am here to tell you that I have abided by your code book to the letter, starting with the ordinance 155-09, where it says, a proposed re a representative of a proposed permit must be at the council meeting in which permit is considered to provide necessary information. If you guys did not ask me any questions, I did not provide any information. Secondly, a written permit to facilitate the building changes can be approved prior to the council meeting at, if circumstances necessitate, and said permit is in compliance with the provisions of the chapter, and this can be approved by the building inspector that is appointed by the city. So my circumstances were, I inquired about getting a shipping container. I thought I had about a week to two weeks before it was going to be delivered. Two days later, I get a call from the company. They had a cancellation and wanted to deliver it that same day. So I went onto the website and I printed off the building permit. I then contacted the appropriate city building inspector to come down and look at my property where he checked setbacks, he checked back foundations, and he even asked if I had permission from my neighbors, which I have a letter here that is signed by all of my neighbors saying they have no objections to me having this on my property. So if I have prior approval from the city building inspector, which you appoint, appointed, how can you deny me this building permit? Well, what you're citing, I believe, is on the building permit itself. Yes. And it doesn't mirror that in the ordinance. It requires to be brought before the city. I'm reading the ordinance directly to you when I put it off the city website, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Here's what I'm reading. Special building permits. Written building, special building permits shall be required for occupancy and use of any and all buildings within the restricted residence.
district except for residential, residential accessory, schools and church related buildings. So I believe we've already determined that the building doesn't fall under an accessory use. It does. If you go back to the code, um, 105.05 part four, residential accessory use means building or structure customarily used in conjunction with a dwelling. As long as it is incidental to a residential purpose. My purposes are storage and a garage for my side-by-side. -side. So therefore, it meets the definitions of residential accessory use. Well, it's not a garage. It is it's a structure a summer house. It's not exceeding 100 square feet, and it's not a pool. It says building or structure. It does not specify. And those are examples, those are not definitive. It, it's not a garage, it's not a tool shed, it's not a summer house. But it is a structure and I'm using it for accessory to my residence. You cannot deny it is a structure. Right. And right now there is no ordinance on the books that say that it is not allowed to have a storage container on residential property. So therefore, you can only judge this building permit on the ordinances that are in the book right now, and not the ones that you intend to pass. And if council members do not like the appearance, that's their personal preference. You have to follow the ordinances, and you have to enforce them fairly and equally amongst everyone who's a citizen. <coughs> So I call for a revote re on my building permit because this was not fair. Well, I, Would you like to see a letter from my neighbors? Authorization of a special permit will only occur if it appears that the said use and type of the building will be compatible with the residential character of the district and the particular use could not be practically built in an unrestricted area or the restricted district boundaries amended logically due to the topography, access to railroad, yada, yada, yada. I've Such a special issues. permit will require three-fourths of the votes of all members of the council. As an accessory building, I do not need accessory structure. I do not need a special building permit. I need a normal building permit. Not denied as a structure. Well, we've already acted on it, and we're going to have to. And you acted on it without me having a chance to say my piece, which is not fair, also. Well, you're there in case there's any questions about it. There were no questions about it. And it's already got prior approval from your building inspector. So you cannot deny that either. Prior approval means approved before this meeting, and I just have to make an appearance here, read your ordinance. Well, we're going to have to move on. We've already taken action on it. You've already glossed over everything here, and you're denying the law. I'm within all the ordinances. <clears throat> As you have them right now, you cannot hold me accountable to an ordinance that is not even written and in the books yet. Well, I think it's, it's one interpretation versus another interpretation. We've already voted on it. Um, but the only thing I can do is take it forward to our attorney and have him read it and see what he thinks about it. You can also call for a revote. What's that? Someone can also call for a revote. I'm not going to revote. We're going to move on with the rest of this meeting. I plead with any of you council members to make a motion for a revote. I have a question. You said that when I asked about why you didn't get this ordinance done, or we done that to the table last time, 
that no attorney wanted to touch it. No. No. I said that, and you said, and nobody said that that wasn't correct. What's that? What's what's that mean? We we just did not find anything else that gave any. Well, I know he talked to one attorney that same night. Whether it was about that or not, I, I, I can't verify no. that. If you want to see the uh, nature of my neighborhood, I've got a picture of a van trailer parked a block, within a block of my house that's been there for over five years, used as storage in an unlicensed, unresidential property. So how yeah. is a shipping container any different than an unlicensed van trailer? I've got 20 other pictures of decaying, decrepit buildings in my neighborhood and messy yards. How is my shipping container making my neighborhood worse. I'm trying to improve my property. I'm trying to make it better. And I know you guys like sending lots of letters about messy yards, so why would you deny me a storage space to keep my yard clean? <clears throat> We're gonna have to take this up with our attorney to see what he thinks about this. So for now, let the motion stand and then we will address it and I will give you feedback when I hear back from you. Will Jeremy be able to talk to your attorney as well? What's that? Will he be involved when you talk with his attorney? Or I, can he? I can't hear what you're saying. Can Jeremy be involved when you speak to Mr. Young? It seems to me that two sides to the well, story would be depends upon when I, prudent. Sometimes he's not there in the office, so he has to call me back. So mm -hmm. trying to arrange a meeting between three people is a little bit difficult. What I'll ask him to do is just read the ordinance. Officer, is the law on. too difficult? What's that? Uh, I would say that uh, if the city ordinance issue, uh, I think the mayor said that he could hold the city attorney, uh, but maybe CSD may do the same. Thank you, sir. Next person is Ruth Agle. All right. Um, the 300 trees that are going to be removed, are those all ash trees? Yes. Okay. And there are 200. Oh, I thought you said 300. Okay. There are 230 between the city and the golf course. We are not going to take all of the golf courses out. So we're going to take out a handful of uh, probably three or four or five of their ash trees to help them out. Okay, because I just want to know that you're not going to take out my walnut trees in retribution for, because you kind of seem to do that. No, Ruth, we're not going to take out the walnut trees. And, uh, now do you want to keep it? Okay. Do you want to keep it pithy and on the No, I'm not going to keep it pithy. I just want to ask. All right, thank you. All right, Julie Lancaster. All right, so I went up to the library to go look at the code, the code book. The what? The code book up at the library. Yeah. And the last time it was codified, it, according to the library copy, was 2016. When's the last time the city codified their ordinances? I think the last time we done this when you resigned. Okay. The I think it's supposed to be every five Hold on, years. hold on, hold on. No. So the last time it was codified was last year. Then why doesn't the library council members have current copies? Well, of probably because Andy didn't send a copy over there and they never asked for one, I'm guessing. There's a lot of things that unfortunately didn't get done that should have got done and we're finding them out as we go along. People bring them up and say, what about this, what about that? We well, relied a lot on our former clerk. Some things didn't get done. We're trying to backfill and figure out where we are in this whole process. Thank you for making that note to us, but I mean, there's some things that we don't know. I think it's easy to blame things on Angie. You know, I mean, I'll go on record. I think you guys made a mistake firing her. I think there are other ways to handle it, but that's my opinion. But I just wanted to find out about the code book. So it has, you guys have codified? Yes. Since then. I don't know. When, when can the library get their new copy? 
We have copies in the. Because uh, the, the, the book, the, the, co the company that does it is supposed to provide you all, so you should be able to go in there. I right have now. a letter on my desk over there that says the last time it was codified, and Angie built the books, got them in from the council members. She probably didn't pull every book in. I know that the city utilities guys, their book was out of date. It got updated. Nobody from the library said anything. I didn't think about going over there, so we will take that for action. Well, I asked council member, and there's 2016 too, and I challenged each of you council members to go look at your book and make sure okay. you that- did, You did not ask me if mine is updated? I only, I only asked one, so you have a 2023. Yes. Okay, that's fine. I, I would just like to have, I mean, because you guys have this new, new code, code officer that's going around, uh, the, the nuisance abatement officer, uh, let me make this clear again, we adopted the International Property Maintenance Code. When was it adopted? It was adopted earlier this year. And we, adopted it, we adopted it by resolution, and tonight we will adopt it by ordinance. <laughs> okay, was it read three times for resolution? It doesn't have to be read three times. State law says that you can read it one time and you can forego the second and third reading and pass it. Yes, it you does. You have to read the first one and publish it. You can read the second and pass the third at the next meeting. That has to be over two different meetings. Okay. All right. That's the end of the. Uh... Well, I'll just go back and look at the meeting minutes and just see. If you can find them. Unfinished business, ordinance 244. And this council is, members, will you look at that? I know I cannot find that you guys, when we talked about this at the August 12th meeting, it said something about um, corrections or my, there was changes in it. It was read one time and it was voted on as corrected. Does anybody remember the corrections besides what I have written in? on the first page where we have residential waste is deleted. Is that the one where you said something about certain trees or no? No, this is this has to do with the burning and those types of things. Open burning. Open burning. And I could not I was not at that meeting and I looked for the paperwork that would have had those changes in it. has any notes from that August 12th meeting pertaining to this ordinance 244. I did not have any notes. Okay. We don't have anything either. Okay. So this is the ordinance amending the municipal code of rural fiber by amending the chapter 105 solid waste control and chapter 106 collection of solid waste to include the following volume-based solid waste collection requirements 
and rate increases for solid waste. So basically what we're taking out is the only open burning restriction, right? Yeah, uh, for residential waste. In other words, you're going to be saying you cannot burn plastic, garbage and plastic and all that. There'll be and all that kind of fun stuff. They have to be, it's supposed to be yard waste, is what this is saying. Yeah. 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 We read it once yeah. in August. We tabled it in September. And now we're bringing it up for the second time around to be rolled in on it. All right, so I'm going to read it again. The mayor was going to check on the, the residential waste and make sure that was correct, what mm -hmm. you wanted to do. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to read it again for the second reading. Does it, does it specify that they can burn leaves and stuff like that? Yes. You can burn There's leaves. another section in Iowa Administrative Code that allows for burning sticks and, and uh, uh, leaves. And even, even tree limbs and things like that in your yard, as long as they originate on your yard. You can't <coughs> take your neighbor's stuff and bring it over and burn it. So this is, I'm going to go back and read this. New provisions, Code of Ordinances of the City of Rawl is amended by adding new provisions to Chapter 1 of 502, which are hereby adopted as follows. Uh, 10502, 14, add the following. Material that is legitimately recycled pursuant to Section 455 of the Code of Iowa and post-use polymers or recoverable speed stocks that are of any of the following processed at a um, gasification facility or held at a gas gasification facility prior to processing production is not interrupted. Um, that is something that the state added. We're just amending our code to say exactly what the state says. And then number 15, toxic and hazardous waste means waste materials, including but not limited to poisons, pesticides, herbicides, acids, caustics, pathological waste, flammable or explosive materials, and similar harmful waste that require special handling and that must be disposed of in such a manner as to conserve the environment and protect uh, the public health and safety. And that is a change to Iowa Administrative Code 567, um, Section 100.2. Section 2 in this is a removal and amending provisions. In 10505, the open burning restricted uh, for residential waste is 105.05.6, and it says uh, residential waste, that requirement is deleted. In other words, we have overridden the state code by saying they allow some things, we're saying none of that. All right, that means you can still burn leaves, things like that in your yard, you just can't burn garbage and plastic and whatever else. Uh, it also amends uh, 105.05.8, which is pesticide containers and seed corn bags to read as follows. And we are also going to renumber this because we're getting, we're doing away with six, and so eight becomes seven, and so on and so forth. Um, paper, plastic containers, uh, pesticide containers, and seed corn bags resulting from farming activities occurring on the premises, if burned in accordance with the rules established by the state uh, of natural Re Department of Natural Resources. Um, we're also amending the provisions of 105.10, which is waste storage containers, to read as follows. Uh, container specifications, waste storage containers shall comply with the following specifications. City approved parts, Waste shall be disposed of in an approved part each single family present or multifamily dwelling unit housing. Three or more persons shall be provided with a city approved 96 gallon cart. 
Each commercial premise will be provided with the same. Dumpsters, every person owning or managing or operating or leasing or renting any premises where there's an excessive amount of refuse that accumulates and where it's storage in the city approved parts uh, as required above is impractical. In other words, the 96 gallon parts are impractical. You gotta have something bigger. Shall maintain a metal bulk storage container approved by the city. All right, now we're amending chapter 106. <coughs> collection service to read, the city shall provide by contract for the collection of all solid waste except bulky rubbish as provided in 10605 within the city. 10607, new provision to read uh, contract requirements. No person shall engage in the business of collecting, transporting, processing, or disposing of solid waste in the city without first entering into a contract with the city. This section does not prohibit an owner from transporting solid waste accumulating on the premises they own, occupy, or is, they, is used by them, um, provided such refuse is disposed of properly in an approved sanitary <coughs> disposal project. Furthermore, a contract is not required for the removal, hauling, or disposal of earth and rock material from grading or excavation activities, provided that all such materials are conveyed in tight vehicles, trucks, or receptacles so constructed and maintained that none of the material being transported is spilled on any public way. Also for the collection of fees, or collection fees, excuse me, renumbering um, section 106.08 to read the collection of disposal of, collection and disposal of solid waste as provided by this chapter are declared to be beneficial to the property served or eligible to be served and there shall be levied and collected fees therefore in accordance with the following. The schedule of fees, residential and commercial premises, 96 gallon part, $25. Rural, $25. Medium commercial size, 96 gallon is $25 plus tax. B, dumpsters. One and a half yard dumpster, $98 plus tax. A two yard dumpster, $125 plus tax. And a four yard dumpster, uh, $250 plus tax. So I think what we were talking about before, you and yeah. I, that pretty much takes care yeah. of this. And there is a $12 minimum charge regardless of usage. Uh, extra waste fee removal, or excuse, extra fee waste removal. Appliance tag is $25, solid waste tag $10, e-tag is $25. All extra fee charges shall be paid in advance of the scheduled pickup. Re amending and renumbering section 10609 to read, residential collection. Normal residential waste shall be of the amount which can be placed in the lid of the spec under the lid of the special 96 gallon cart must be able to be securely latched for the base fee, which means you don't have stuff sticking out of the top and you can't close the lid. Uh, residential collections, residential waste shall be uh, placed by the curb at, by 7 a.m. on the collection day, which is Tuesday. Section two of repealer, all ordinances and parts of ordinances in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed. Section three, severability clause. If any section, provision, or part of this ordinance shall be adjudged invalid or unconstitutional, such adjudication shall not affect the validity of the ordinance as a whole or any section, provision, or part thereof not adjudged invalid or unconstitutional. Section four, when effective, this ordinance shall be in effect after its final passage, approval, and publication as provided by law. <coughs> so I have a motion to I need a motion for the second reading. I move the second it. reading. Rob. Good job. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. second. All right. That was Aaron? Yes. All right. So we need a roll call vote on that. Lana. Yes. Rob. Aye. Aaron. Yes. Dan. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we have five eyes, no nays, no nobody's absent, and the motion is carried. Can I do a third reading or second? Yeah. Third reading. Let's do a third reading on the next yeah. next time. Ordinance 246. This is going back to table this amendment to the ordinance. Um, we've discussed it already. <coughs> we want any further discussion? Before you go any further, I've got a petition against this ordinance amendment. 119 people have saying, spoken. But you're not recognized to speak. You can just gloss over anybody in the citizen here who wants to say something. All right, so we go back to. Okay. All right, we tabled this the last time because we only had a motion to approve it and we didn't have a second, so it died. So I'm going to go ahead and read this again. Ordinance 246, an am ordinance amending the chapter of ordinances of the city of Rolf by amending chapter 155 and adding section 155.16. Being enacted by the city council of the city of Rolf, section one, amending chapter 155, section 155.16 shall read as follows. Cargo container, one, cargo containers include standardized reusable vessels that were a, originally designed for or used in the parking, shipping, movement, or transportation of freight, articles, goods, or commodities, and or. B, originally designed for or capable of being mounted or moved by rail, truck, or ship by means of a mounted, being mounted on a chassis or similar transport device. This definition includes the terms transport containers, and portable site storage containers that have similar appearance to and similar characteristics of cargo containers. Number two, for the purposes of this section, cargo containers also include railroad cars, unlicensed truck vans, converted mobile homes, trailers, unlicensed campers, unlicensed buses, bus bodies, and other similar items that are used for the storage of articles, goods, and other personal property. Three, cargo containers are not permitted in the residential districts. Number four, violation of this provision shall be a municipal infraction of $500 for the first offense, <coughs> $1,000 for the second offense, and $1,500 for the third and subsequent offenses. Section two, repealer. All ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed. Section three, the effective date. This ordinance shall be in effect after its final passage approval and publication is provided by law. So, last time we had a motion to approve and we didn't have a second and it died. So, so this again, will be the first reading. Motion to approve the above sections of chapter 155 of the city code of ordinance is made by, do I have a motion? <coughs> I'm going to need a table again. I make a motion. Okay. What is your motion? To uh, further this. Okay. Do I have a second? Okay, I don't have a second. So the motion dies. Now, Jim, do I have a motion to table? Before, hold on, before we table this, it took me two hours to make, to make two phone calls to Koki to get a solution to this. You guys had it for a week and had came up with it. Well, I got stacked with other towns there, but we're not other towns. So I want to know what the problem is. Why, why we're not even considering what I told you guys at the start of the meeting? All right, if you had passed it on earlier, I would have called over there and found out more. Well, I had no idea until Sunday that this was going on. And like you and I discussed earlier, it's not neither one of our fault that cell phone reception 
should they get passed on. Is there any way we can get it on a referendum ballot and let the citizens decide if they want yeah, these things? We'll have to ask the auditor if that's possible. Here's the thing. We've already done what I, I told everybody here once as a city. We've already done it once, and it stands. What I said is we there's, there is a trailer on residential property as far as Beacon is concerned, but the city has zoned it commercial, so the, the person owning said trailer is paying a residential tax, taxes, but it's on commercial, so it is protected from this ordinance. We've already done it. Somebody's already done it in town. The city's already done it once. We can easily put that in here. I don't know why we're, we're gonna have a fight. You're gonna have to explain this to me after the meeting, because I don't quite follow what, what you're, you're saying. All you gotta do is call to listen in the morning, but I will tell you after the meeting, but I'm, okay. I, I make a motion table up with this. There's right. an answer. We've That's got right. an answer. Or we just fill it now and rewrite it. We'll bring it back next meeting if I'm finished. All right, we have a motion to table. So I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, it's table. I need, I need more eyes than just. All right, All right. do a roll call vote. Al. Aye. Uh, Rob. Nay. Dan. Nay. Slam. No. You are aware that the property I'm talking about is your trailer. That trailer's licensed and licensed. No, 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 it's not, it's not an issue of license, Lana. You put the beak on beacon, you're paying a residential tax on that. But as as the city's got its own, it is commercial. So technically it's on commercial. No. Yes, technically it's on commercial, but it is uh, you pay residential tax on it. All and we the city's already done it once. All I'm saying we have to do is as a city, we can zone a property that Jeremy wants to put this on as commercial. We can do that. The county cannot interfere because it's in a city. So I can solve it real easily by moving that trailer onto the commercial property that we do own. And we do pay a commercial. Well, yeah, you, 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 five could, years. you could do that, but I mean, we have, the taxes are higher. <coughs> we have to do something here. We did not get a motion to move ahead with it. We, get, we did not get a motion to table it further. We've got to have an action to go somewhere. Just don't bring it back as unfinished business. After we make modifications. All right. But nobody wants to know we will table it. All right. I uh, think we'll have to call our attorney on now. Was that last one a motion to table it? Yes. yes. And it was not approved. It was not approved. It was not approved. So, guys? Yep. According to parliamentary procedures, it's that it's got to be all redone now. According to parliamentary procedures. All right, let's move ahead. Mr. Baker, we All right, the last, the last unfinished item was the mobile emergency generator return. I mentioned last meeting that we have this emergency generator down here in the ambulance shed. It's been there for buku years. It doesn't get used anymore. I got a hold of the state. The state wants will take it back with no problem. So what I need for the council is just you're okay to hire somebody to haul it down to do near Perry. That's where so you need a motion for that. I need a motion I so I can hire somebody. Second. Please turn it. All right. I can't see that. What? Okay. They don't have a big enough um, sale. Oh, it's not. It's not on a trailer. It's on a trailer, but the trailer is not meant for highway use. It has to be on something that's really good. <coughs> and if we're returning that, won't they come and get it? We have to deliver it back. How the hell are we getting up here? Guys from town way back when went down and picked it up. Then they built a trailer for it so they could pull it around town. So. We don't have the equipment to take it back off the trailer. You just put the whole trailer on the flatbed and take it down there and they will offload it. Sign the paperwork saying it's been returned to the state and, it, and in turn it goes back to the federal government and we don't have to worry about it anymore. 
where do you think that's going to talk? I don't know. I just want everybody to go ahead and do that. To start looking into it. And we're in harvest season now, so nobody's going to be available anyway. I want to get it done sometime before spring. There is like 95 miles. So whatever the current rate is. Probably going to cost $1,000, give or take. We got a motion and a second. Vote. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Okay, I'll run. Wait a minute. Sorry, I only heard one aye. What's that? Aye. I need, I need a second. Oh, okay. Second. Second. Sheriff's report. Okay. 28 the agreement. This is with the Pulte Sheriff's Department, the County Sheriff's Department. So everybody has received a copy of the 28 e We have to take some action by the end of December, whether we're going to continue under the, to uh, keep the 28 e in place, because it essentially ends in June 30th, but we have to give six months notice on what we're going to do. So we've got until December to decide what I would like. Everybody I hope has read through it and determined if there needs to be any changes to it, if we want to uh, write a fresh 28 year agreement starting up in June when this expires where we want to go with this. So I gave everybody a package <coughs> that uh, you already have the 28E agreement with the county. I had, I handed you out a copy of one that's similar um, for the county of Humboldt, what their costs are. And, um, and just so you know, we paid 5,500 a month for 12 months, so $66,000 a year. The is there a copy of that up at City Hall that everybody can go look at? The 28 agreement? Anyway. So. I'll find out tomorrow. What's that? Every city is paying for like a $12.50 standard. It's per person. That's through home. That's, that's their cost. What I'm just doing is showing you, if you look at ours, and you look at the 28E agreements, forget the cost. You look at the parameters of the 28E. Here, we have certain things, we have a presence that we ask for, 20, 20 hours a, um, a month. In Humboldt, they do not ask for that. They just simply respond to all the calls um, and the pastor driving and everything. They don't have a, a, a presence there for any specific amount of time. So it's just Humboldt. something to consider. So they charge differently than, than our county does. They charge per capita. Um, how do we charge? How do we charge? What's that? How do we get charged? I mean, we, 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 play, we pay the sheriff. For 20 hours. Yes, for 20 hours, which is a flat okay. fee. Well, can we get him here next year? Sure. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I didn't know you guys were discussing yeah. that. You probably don't have to answer our No, I'm really not. <laughs> the the difference is, questions? With, you ask him or do you want me to I mean, like, well, like, no, it's monitoring our school bus stop that we used to do. Can we go back to doing that? Can we just stuff like that? Can we, whatever can we, can we can craft as an agreement between the sheriff's department and the city is, 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 is in play. I mean, we can change the parameters of the 28D. We can uh, say we just want to go back to basic services. We can say, no, we want you here for 90 hours a week or a month, you know, that type of thing. Um, it's really up to you. What I'm trying to convey is we need to make some decisions and soon about where we want to go with this 28D agreement. He's going to tell him to be here next month. So, anyway, does anybody have any 
anything on the subject or any questions or anything? Nope. Okay. Next item is Trunk or Treat on Thursday, October 31st. The community center here has been reserved by the Lions Club. I understand that the gazebo people were talking about possibly having something out there at the gazebo as well. Um, we opened this place up for refuge. Uh, it's going to probably be cold again. And so. Yeah, where have they had the trunk at before? They've had it out in front, and basically right out here. Right out here. Yeah. Well, that's the end of the hair this morning. We're going to be doing like chilling and stuff in here. Yeah. So Friday afternoon will be the best. So if you want to do some cinnamon rolls. So last year we had a couple people that they went and bought all the hot dogs and, and, um, and the drinks and all that and they just used the kitchen area to serve and it was whoever could come in and you want to get warm if you want to bring your grandkids in or just come up here and have a little camaraderie. We did have people sit, sitting in here that we did have hand out candy also. <coughs> Well, we're doing this on the 31st. Well, so you said the Lions is going to be in. Well, the, the Lions asked me to reserve this for the Lions Club. Mm -hmm. we're, doing, we're doing like for chili and stuff like that. Because we feel really cold and come and have some chili. So anyway, it's been reserved. So anyway, we'll just. So we have to do it a different day than the 31st. No, we're doing it. We're doing, we're doing everything the 31st. Yep. It used to be trick or treat and was decided to be the 31st. A couple of years ago, we added on the truck. For those people that wanted to do it that way. All right. Moving on. Next item up is we're all hometown pride update. So, Barb. Okay. Um, just want to thank you for letting me do my little spiel. This is basically about the project that we've done this last year and some of the tools for the game. Uh, we had our alliance and trees for the grant, which we received $3,285. Our group and other volunteers planted 16 trees, and they broke three trees along the New Green Space on Middle Street, four trees at Will Trump Campground, nine trees at the Golf Club. Why well, haven't taken care of by other members? Otherwise, the hometown pride group usually takes weekly turns of watering the trees that we are responsible for. <clears throat> Pocahontas County Foundation Grant, um, we're working on it right now. We um, did get $7,203 in grant money to replace the, as you know, the front door. It was all brand new, so that mail can get our water in. <laughs> and then, so there, we're waiting for, we had to order new glass for the North side, and this is from Elbow Glass, is where we were getting it from. And then, uh, because he's been kind of delayed with this project, he will put all new locks in the building. And then, the mechanisms that were on the top of those uh, door, front doors, he's going to put back over there on those doors for free. So, I thought that was pretty nice of him because he knows we're pretty, I'm getting very impatient. <laughs> Because this has to get done. So, um, I think, uh, yeah, that's about the story on that. But I hope you guys appreciate the fact that we will have these handicapped doors eventually. You know, just kind of, Kevin has to come a liar and then he has to come back and finish his job. So, I'll do the class. And then the other thing we do around here is we usually do a lot of weeding. I don't know if people really realize how much weeding, weeding and trimming bushes we do. Spraying weeds at the Wilcox Campground, that's one of our big things. Heritage Park, Four Corners on Main Street. And we do also the cleanup in front of the community center here. Um, we do the lamppost up around the, at the pool. And like I said, we take turns watering the trees. And all that kind of good stuff. So our new um, grant that we want to apply for for this coming year. <coughs> This is going to be out at the where the Wilcox Trailhead, and we would we're going to try to or, or apply for a water bottle station. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but it's a, looks like this. 
Can you put your water bottles in there? And we'll, uh, we just had a meeting today and we're going to, if we get it, it'll be on the outside so that when people come up from the trail, they will see it. And it'll be attached to the shelter house, and you need the shelter house. And then um, we're going to apply also for um, bike stuff because this is a bike trail, and so we're going to apply to. I know you're going to think it's a little crazy, but they do need these things. We've got an uh, air pump, and then there's tools that go with it. And they're not cheap, but we're going to apply for that. And then we also have discussed, uh, I don't know how many people are really familiar with the trailhead, but where the shelter house is, there's a little path that goes down to the trail. So we're going to even put a bed in to cement that path. We have to do that. So I'm hoping that the council approves of all this. <laughs> so we're so. talking about that path that goes like on the south side of the oh, south side. Oh, the yeah. And then that and one goes all the way bushes. to the trail. Yeah. yeah, it isn't that far. Well, it's, yeah. And then these tools will be cemented into. <laughs> they'll be hooked into the cement, I should say, so that nobody steals them. And uh, then we do a lot of, oh, then I, did, I don't know if I said, and then we are, then if we get this grant and these tools, we're, no, we're the only ones in the county that have this. So we will be a first. We're going to talk to the DNR. Um, then we also do a lot of decorating at Christmas time, and I know you see the banners that we put up over there at Heritage Park. We do that kind of stuff and decorate for Christmas and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and then we have two grants that, you know, that we also do, and um, one's a paint grant. So if anybody has any ideas? Yeah, that building up there. Um, Which building? There. There's a normal lawnmower around it. <laughs> Can it be some other color? Yeah, and I, don't, and I don't know. I'd have to find, you know, there are rules for all of these things, so I don't know if that's a business. Um, you know, is it going to be painted or not? We had discussed that at one time, uh, but the problem is the person that owns it has to paint it. Well, we volunteer, I don't know. So these are, you know, we've done the painting of a pool building and all that kind of stuff. So but if anybody has any ideas, you know, we're always looking for ideas. And then we also have the Build with Guides grant that we try to apply for, we haven't gotten one for a couple of years because their funds have gotten really low and there's a lot of people that apply for those. Uh, that's where we've gotten all these picnic tables and the garbage cans and all that good stuff that's in the town is uh, with those with bags. So I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Ben Jacobson. We just wanted to get uh, City Council approval of my car. You're going to speak up. Uh, Why don't you come up here again? We just wanted to get the council's approval of my car liquor permit at the city. For? Uh, bar right here at 405. Okay, so you have plans to do this or? Yeah, it's the whole process. You can't get insurance. You can't get permitted to get insurance, and it doesn't make sense to do all that at the city. You need a liquor permit for a certain alcohol. Uh, do you have some? Do you have some plans written up and drawn up, or something? How you're going to accomplish all this? Well, just a, it's going to be a small little guy. Nothing fancy. No food. Just some chips and beer. And do you know what the capacity is going to be? Uh, I called Lynn and uh, he had no idea where I should go with it. So. Uh, I called the state fire marshal and they said that in their realm down there somewhere, there are people that make those determinations based on square footage and stuff. That's the state. Have you looked into the possibility of having to add a second entrance to that building? Yeah, there's a, uh, I don't know how many of you have been inside that building. There's a bathroom this building right here? Yeah. There's a bathroom and then there's a little office. And then what's funny? Uh, it's pretty small. Oh, no kidding, it's small. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> we, 
if it just it is your small, you just. Okay, well, I'm just asking. Well, I'm trying to talk to you. No, I'm trying to tell you something. Well, I'm not trying to tell you something. I'm just asking. I'm not asking for you to tell something. I'm just asking for approval. That's it. I don't need your comments or your opinion. You say yes or no, and that's it. Okay, now. Okay, great. Well, is it in a whole voting process or what? Well, there will be. Okay. All right. So, anything else to add to that? Yeah, so the, there's a window on the back there being cut it open for the door. Okay, so, is, that building is made out of brick, right? Yes. So, you're going to have to get somebody to do all that? Yeah, we're going to concrete saw, we'll cut it out. Well, it's all process. I can't give you a timeline. Uh, hopefully, three, six months. Okay. You own a building already? Yeah, I don't own a building already. Okay. You was going to put a liquor store in there? Yeah, there's extra cost to that that we didn't anticipate, so it wasn't worth it. Well, can you check and see what, what the how many people you can have in there? Well, yeah, when I mean, I talked to I mean, I was in the dentist, that was a dentist shop one day. Oh, I'm not expecting it to be anything yeah. fancy or even support my house. It's just an extra income and it can fail. It's a really cool place for me and my family to hang out. Yeah, but it'd still be nice to know, can you have 10 people in there? When I talked to the state liquor board, they said it's up to the city authority. So that's why I'm here. Well, the fire marshal would probably be the one that makes that call. I mean, seriously. Oh, I don't want to talk to your fire chief and he didn't handle any idea at all. He said he'd look into it and get back to me. So. He never did. No. All right. Uh, anything else? No, nope, I just want to help okay. you start so, the process or not. All right. So, based on what Ben has passed, is there any qualms about offering him a liquor license? It, it, obviously, the building has to be made uh, usable in that realm. Based on his plans, is there any any problem with that? I don't think I'd like to it be, meets all the requirements as far as the safety and the uh, capacity issues, and the it's all time, ironed out. For the first time on a, on a liquor license, do you have to go through like a background check or anything? I do not know. So they didn't say any of that, no. I'm sure if you have taxes or something like that, they probably won't give you. Well, I believe we already approved the liquor store type slash tobacco shop last year at some point. It was still the same. So, yeah, I, I, I guess we, we did. did. Yeah, yeah I, I have something. Yeah, we approved it. We already approved the liquor store. Yeah. Uh, so if we give you this license and for the state fire marshal shuts that down, does that mean he still has got his liquor license? Well, I don't, I don't know. Well, I mean, I don't want to hand somebody a, a, well, we're, an open gun but to speak to say to just go out and buy mass quantities of alcohol. He can do that already. We've, we've already I guess, what does a liquor license allow him to do versus what he can do as a private citizen? You don't have to get, you don't have to get a business license. You'll have to get his liquor license. You'll have to get a sales tax license. All those things have to be done. It's like it's, 40 to 60 day process. Have you started any of that other stuff? Yet? It doesn't make sense to do it unless you guys say yes. And well, yeah, but I don't well, we've already said it. yes to a, to a liquor license yeah. before. Yeah, that's why. I, but this is a serve. I was a serve bottle. Yeah. Can't drink in there type yeah, deal. This is a different I didn't know like neighbors would have a problem with the bar there. I didn't know what. So I just wanted to make sure before we start shouting out money on insurance because you can't apply for a license until you have insurance. And Well, if, it, if it's, uh, you know, if the fire marshal says you can have 10 people in there, that's all. Yeah. You know what, I mean. I think you're breaking the laws. No. I don't do Let's, I don't know, I gotta go shut it down. Let's just go back to, I have a motion to approve a liquor license with um, the internal uh, sale. I make a motion. I don't want to hold him up on the liquor store. I mean, the bar. If he can, if this is what's going to get you started. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I just want to open up the. So I have a motion. So I make a motion that we let him do this with the understanding that 
he checks with the fire marshal and makes sure that this is all kosher. Yeah, I'm sure insurance is going to require all that. So, I have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. Five ayes. No, you say nay. You did. All right, thank you guys for your time. All right, next item up, vacuum cleaner. Now the knees. Okay. Knees, can we just talk about that? You can talk about it if you want. Yeah, the library has won a new vacuum cleaner. The one that we have that we share on all three areas here is like spitting out more dust than it's actually taking in. So who is your vacuum cleaner? We're going to buy one for the library, the city hall, and community center to share just like we have in the past. I would think three to four hundred dollars we're looking for a professional one. I'm looking at a sharp professional. That's what the bank has and they've done pretty well with that. And ours is shot. We make a motion that we get this four hundred dollar guy can later. We'll be sharing the cost with the library. Second. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All eyes. Yeet. All right. New phone system. The phone system we've got in the office over there is old. Yeah. The base station is a handset. And so when Dee or anybody is working on the computer and typing in stuff, they got to have the handset on their shoulder, talking. Um, it's old. I don't think it can be upgraded uh, with any new new parts like a headset or whatever. So we looked into, um, you have it in your packages. I talked with Arion. They shot us a, a quote for a, a new phone with basically three lines. It would be one in City Hall, one in the mayor's office, <coughs> and one at the city utility building. The other thing is there's a requirement, the city guys have also told me I'm free here, state requirement like for gas, for towing and stuff like that. We need to have something in the phone system that will notify people who to contact in an emergency situation. Yes. Most of the time all people have is the city call number, the 712-848-3124. And our system needs to be able to do just like Gilmore cities, push one for city hall, push two for you know. So is this one that you would like? He's looked at this. I have it looked at it. Yeah. So I told her, I'm, we just, I told the, the salesperson, I just want a basic one. system with three yeah. lines. And that's what they, they shot us. So right, currently we're paying $24 a month or 20, almost $25 a month for the fax machine. Uh, our monthly bill will go up uh, approximately $70. And uh, so we have to do have a one-time cost on that, but then then uh, our bill will go up a little bit. But as it, as it is, we don't have any of the paperwork to show how to go in there and change the messages or anything like that. We try to figure out this old system, and the buttons are worn out on it, and it just needs to be replaced. And this is as simple as we can come up with. Short of two cans of string. <coughs> so this kind of thing, so you don't have to go like this when you're on the computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to be able to have. Speakers. Like so, it's got a loop uh, headset. It's head, it's headset. Oh my God. Yeah. So you guys have all looked at it. I take it. Uh, motion to upgrade the phone system for city. Yeah. So I have a second. Second. Yep. Aaron, second. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. All eyes. All eyes? Yes. Okay. All right. Garbage rates. And I've already, I, we've already had that in the ordinance that we've read to you, 244. Yep. But I just want you to know we haven't been covering the cost of our garbage since we switched over to Bennett. And I don't think we were coming close to covering them before either. So we have about a $10,000 bill between garbage collection and for sanitation per month. So hopefully these new rates that 
we have in this new ordinance are we going to act after next month or after the next meeting or whatever mm -hmm. will help us alleviate some of these that was we had discussed that a long time ago yeah what it was supposed to yeah it was probably going so to be was 26. yeah 25. we had to wait till we got costs in costs in so, yeah we definitely need to have that because we're losing about um Twenty-seven hundred dollars a month with our current rates. All right. So what's the rate you want? It is. It, it was in that. It was in that ordinance that you had tonight. But I wanted to make sure you understood that because if somebody comes and asks you why are the rates going up after this ordinance is passed, it's because we're losing twenty-seven hundred dollars a month. Copy that. All right, next item up is um, revised Highway 15 resurface costs. I got a, some paperwork from the state. They uh, sent us a revised cost of resurfacing the highway through town, widening it for the, the uh, trail, and also for resurfacing the parking area. Um, from on Broad Street around the corner and down to uh, Elm Street. And the original cost we had agreed to was $143,000 and, uh, and that was broken out over three years. Revised cost is $99,000. $611 and it's broken out over three years. So that's a savings of roughly about $44,000 from the original cost. So um, just wanted to bring that to your attention. I have to sign this agreement. So I was hoping that. the only one who has to sign that agreement? Yeah. Okay. And so I had to sign that agreement and return it to them, but I wanted your approval to sign it. Sign it now before they change their mind. <laughs> oh no, we can't make that money. We're not moving really anything from the original agreement, are we? The city clerk also signed it too. No, no they're doing the same yeah. cost with this. Yeah. They did add a feature on to it and it's not gonna it's really involved in the cost too. Is when they resurface everything, they're going to mill down where all the markings are at, so it's slightly depressed, so that when they put the markings in there, they'll last longer. So when you drive across the center line, it goes up. Mm -hmm. No, it won't do that. Oh, it won't do that. Yeah. And so anyway, that's where we are. Right okay. now. I kind of want to give you a quick update. They're they're right now they're focused. They did the east side of the sidewalk. They're working on the west side now. They may get the commercial um, between here and Elm Street done. Mm -hmm. uh, possibly they might go a block further. I don't think they're gonna make it all the way down to, to Pine Street this year. And then they're not gonna go around the corner this year. They're gonna do that next year along with the resurfacing in the highway and, and so on and so forth. They're just running on time the and the weather's gonna change. So anyway, so I have a motion to Sorry, you have a question? Go ahead. No, we need a motion. So I have a motion to go ahead and let me sign this new agreement, revised agreement for the savings. I have a second. I motion. Okay, I have a motion. You know the motion. Did you? Well, he gave you the motion. Right the I did. This is signed now. Before the change. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a motion. Sign it right now. Your Honor. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right, ordinance 247 is the International Property Maintenance Code. And this was a resolution originally. We had a resolution to We had a resolution, but our attorney said we also have to have an ordinance. So we have to put it in our ordinances as well. So uh, bear with me here. Being enacted by the City Council of Rawl, Section 1, New Chapter. Code of Ordinances of the City of Rolf is amended by adding a new chapter 156 entitled Building Codes, which is hereby adopted and read as follows. Uh, 
section 15601 is the title. This chapter, this chapter shall be known and may re be referred to as the City of Rolf Building Codes. 15602, International Property Ma Maintenance Code, or the I IPMC. Pursuant to published notice and public hearing as required by law, the International Property Maintenance Code 2015 edition, published by the International Code Council, is hereby adopted in full by reference and for such portions as may be in here and after deleted, modified, or amended. An official copy of the IPMC and its subsequent amendments, modifications, and additions and deletions is on file in the city or the office of the city clerk. There's a binder over there with the IPMC in there and then the changes. Compliance 15603. When applicable, property owners and occupants shall also comply with any associable provisions of chapters 50 and 51, which are nuisance abatement and nuisance vehicles, chapter 52, mowing of properties, chapters 90 through 92 for water service, chapters 95 through 100 for sanitary sewer and stormwater, chapters 105 and 106 for solid waste, chapters 135 and 136 for sidewalks and streets, chapters 145, 146, 150, 151, 155, 160, and 161, building and property regulations of the city of Rolf code of ordinances. Um, paragraph B, where conflicts occur between the 2015 IPMC and the subsequent amendments, modifications, additions, and deletions, the city of Rolf code of ordinances, or other reference standards, the provisions of the 2015 IPMC shall take precedence and apply. And there's reserved um, uh, paragraphs there for other codes, should we in the future des decide to amend or to uh, uh, adopt those as well, such as the electrical codes, plumbing codes, yada, yada, yada. Uh, section 2, pre repealer, all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed. Section 3, severability, if any section provision or part of this ordinance shall be adjudged as valid or unconstitutional, such adjudication shall not affect the validity of the ordinance as a whole or any section provision or part thereof not adjudged invalid or unconstitutional. Section 4, when effective. This ordinance shall be in effect from and after its final passage, approval, and publication as provided by law. So I need a motion to approve the first reading. Dan. Second. And Rob seconds it. Okay, I need a roll call vote. Al? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Lana? Yes. Dan? Yes. Rob? Yes. And all eyes. So the motion for the first reading has been approved. All right. Uh, resolution 738, U UBI quick claim deed. Um, as everybody knows, we sold the, the property across the street to UBI. And we're going to turn it into a green space. This is just finalizing the, um, the process here. So this is a resolution approving and authorizing the sale of the City of Rolf real property parcels lots 1, 2, 3, and 4 in Block 14 in the original town of Rolf, excuse me, Pocahontas County, Iowa. Whereas the City of Rolf was the owner of parcels lots 1, 2, and 3, and 4 in Block 14, here and after described the property. And whereas in 2024 the City agreed to sell the property to UBI for the sum of $4,000 did receive payment from United Bank of Iowa and did convey the property to UBI. And whereas at the regular council meeting on June 10th, the Rome City Council passed Resolution 731 proposing the sale of the property, scheduling a public hearing and directing publication of notice. And whereas an appropriate notice was prepared and published in accordance with the requirements of Section 362.3 of the Code of Iowa <coughs> and whereas Rolf City Council has now held a public hearing on the proposed sale and has determined that the sale should be accomplished. Now, therefore, let it be 
to be resolved um, by the Rolf City Council as follows. Section one, sale of the property to UBI is hereby approved and authorized. Section two, the attorney for UBI prepared and the mayor has executed on behalf of the city an appropriate quick claim deed dated September 26, 2024, conveying the property from the city to UBI. Said deed was prepared by Thaddeus E. Osgrove, who's their attorney. Uh, said deed is hereby approved and signed as executed. Section three, all resolutions of parts of resolutions in conflict and provision of this resolution are hereby repealed. Section four, any section, provision, or part of this resolution shall be judged invalid or unconstitutional. Such adjudication shall not affect the validity of the resolution as a whole or any section or provision or part thereof not adjudged invalid or unconstitutional. Section five, this resolution shall be in effect after its final passage and approval as provided by law. So I need a motion to approve the resolution. My motion to approve the right. EBI. Second claim deed. All right, Rob. Motion. We have a second by Aaron. Um, so I need a roll call vote. Al? Yes. Lana? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Rob? Yes. Dan? Right. Um, five us. No nays. No absence. Uh, passed and approved by the council this day of 14 October. All right. Next item up, um, we're working on this um, uh, general obligation bond to pay for the removal of the ash trees to reimburse the city for the cost of taking down the school and the asbestos uh, remediation um, to um, also for the water power and reimburse for the uh, work that's been done on the water meter issues. Um, I have to make an agreement with the financial services company to help us through the, the process. So um, essentially we have what you might call an, an agreement or even a, it's not a formal resolution, but uh, this, the company that I talked to is Spear Financial Services. Um, they have an office in Cedar Rapids, and I've been talking to them about it. Um, They're going to be our fiduciary. They're going to watch our money and make sure we don't overspend, that we don't borrow too much, that we do the right things. So, um, let me read this real quick. Whereas Spear is a consulting firm specializing in municipal finance related matters, uh, whereas the client uh, desires to retain the services of Spear to provide these services. And whereas the client is a municipal entity and Spear is a municipal advisor, as such terms are defined within the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, now therefore the parties agree that um, they will act as our, <coughs> when I sign this document, send it back to them, they will act as our municipal advisor. Um, The authorization, um, basically you're going to authorize me and the city clerk to discuss any terms of engagement, um, to acknowledge any such engagement letter on behalf of um, ourselves, and to work with additional disclosures that may be contained uh, within the agreement. Um, They only get paid for uh, what services they provide to us. Um, make sure I got it. Uh, the financial advisory services will be $5,200 plus three tenths of 1% of the municipal securities issued. Uh, in excess of a million dollars, we're not going after a million dollars, so um, basically we need $5,200 and the services um, be an additional $5,900 um, for their work. Uh, for post issuance, 
services in case we need to get a hold of them or have anything fixed. It's $95 an hour uh, for the advisor and $50 an hour for the administration <coughs> people. And for services rendered, um, the non-issuance services rendered shall be provided at the following not to exceed 100 hours. The advisor will be $100 an hour. The administrative personnel will be $50 an hour. So am I okay to go ahead and engage these people or do you want me to look for another company or multiple companies? So $12,000 up front and then yeah. an extension hour. That, that's, no, 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 clear choice. that's added to the cost of the hiring the bond attorney because right now we're looking at about a hundred and oh, roughly about one hundred thirty thousand dollars. I think is the total. No, I'm sorry, that's wrong. That's wrong. Uh, <coughs> what was it? For the trees, like one hundred. The trees were one hundred thirty thousand. Yeah. The. Um, it's over two hundred thousand. Yeah, it's 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 right around two hundred thousand dollars that we'll be borrowing. I just need a motion to allow me to I move to hire these people. people. So stay on duty. Stay with, do what you do. So moved, or second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 And let's see. Anything else here? In the past, did you, she include the copies of the nuisance abatements like I did this time? Would it be beneficial when I do that? You want me to write in just as the address? You want me to write in the name of the people for you to know, or would that be beneficial? Yeah. Isn't that that's kind of why we hired that third individual that just took the for added amount of Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't know if you wanted when it said 102 C here, if you wanted to know who that was or anything. I don't think. Okay. In my opinion, it's not necessary. Okay. Whatever they want. <clears throat> but again, I'm keeping all of that. It's all divided up in there. If you have a question on it, make sure you come in or let me know, and I can scan it like I did for Al and send it to you. All right. You said earlier you wanted to withhold your comment till the end. D had something she wanted to add. What's that? D had something she wanted to add. Well. Oh, yeah, talk about it. Well, I wanted to point out a couple things that I missed in my comments here. Num number one, the city guys have winterized the pool and they will be doing Wilcox Park here uh, shortly. We did all the parks today. Okay. Is that all done? Yeah. All right. Um, that's good. We did have some damage down there. Um, somebody, one of the spigots there by one of the parking spots, somebody drove off with the hose still connected, broke it, so they shut the system down. It's gonna to have to be repaired next spring. Um, railroad building, if you've ever been going off the golf course, there was a tin shed out there. Well, that's gone now, that's completely taken care of. And the gym complex, uh, he's gonna be starting on that shortly to take that thing down and get rid of it. And the last item I wanna pass is I was alerted by our person who does cleaning at the parks and city hall here that down in Wilcox Park, there was something strange in the bottom of the women's garbage can inside the women's bathroom. And so she took a picture of it, sent it to me. I went down and looked at it and called the sheriff and it turns out it was a crack pipe and a, and a vial in a little case uh, buried underneath the, um, the liner for the garbage can. So we pulled the liner out. The sheriff took custody of that. And so I don't know what's going on in the world. It, it's really sad that uh, you know, we live in a small town and we've got this problem, just like every other place in the world. So. There's nothing else to tell. Well, do we want to talk about ask if we had a date here, Wednesday or Thursday? Oh, yeah. um, do you guys want to? 
will be available to do interviews Wednesday or Thursday of this week. 5.30. Wednesday, not Thursday. Okay, let's do a Wednesday because I get my I get the combine back Thursday. Can you put a put a uh, agenda out for Wednesday? Do it at six. Put that. Do it at six. Make it later. Wednesday six. Excellent.